Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review in this series, which I kind of started uh, last year, but we were moving the uh, moving offices, uh, having this one built. Um, hence the, all the new, you know, backgrounds and everything you've been getting used to. But uh, I did one for Stephen Law's The Worm, which I'll probably end up refilming now that I have the background set up the way that I like it. But today, we are talking about Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. Uh, this one is an all-time favorite of mine. Uh, the, the best part about this book is it is a coming-of-age story about a group of kids fighting an, you know, uh, a supernatural evil that doesn't feel like Stephen King's It. There are so many times, I would say the same thing about Boy's Life, um, even though there's not much supernatural about that one. Um, maybe a little bit here and there, but uh, it's it doesn't feel like Stephen King's world. Um, and so often you come across, you know, damn near anything with kids is going to be labeled, you know, if it's done right, is going to be labeled, you know, Stephen King light or and any of that nonsense. Well, with this one, um, you, you get a completely different sense of the, the evil and the kids. And of course, there's always going to be similarities with the, uh, with the kids interactions and whatnot. But in this one, I feel this one stands wholly and completely alone by itself. Uh, it's rare that you come across those where a coming of age feels so wholly, uh, original. Um, the rendering truck in, in the book is one of the scariest parts of the book. Um, and it's one of the things that sticks out the most for me. The thing that, the, the number one thing that sticks out that I always remember is the death of a major, major character. Um, it would be something like if in It, Bill or Ben or even Bev dies you know, very early on in the book, or half about halfway through the book. This is a chunker. Um, let's see here. It's about it's about six hundred pages, five hundred ninety some odd pages. Um, I have not had great success with some of uh, Dan Simmons' other horror novels. I love Song of Kali, one of the most disturbing endings ever. Um, I wasn't a fan of the uh, what is it, The Abominable. Um, that one was goofy. Um, Drood was good, but I don't consider that one much of a horror novel. There are some creepy sections. The Terror is one of my favorite, uh, all-time favorite hor horror novels. Uh, but this one, the I think I gave this one 4.5 stars. I can't remember um, if I gave it a full five or not. There were certain times when it lulled. Um, but you're going to find that in any, any novel that's over 300 pages. And there are people who think, you know, any book over 300 pages is a waste of time anyways. And I think what they're talking about is, you know, the slice of life moments, um, when you get really deep into the characters, uh, some people just don't like that. Me, I'm on the other side of the fence. I absolutely love it when that happens. Um, my favorite character in the book was Dwayne. Um, the, the evil was very, very cool, very well done. I especially like the utterly insane, bombastic, epic ending at the school. Now, here's the thing. I don't remember certain key aspects of this book. I don't remember what the evil was. Um, so that's another thing that, that I think it stands out. More often than not, when people talk about it, they talk about Pennywise, the entity known as it. Um, in this one, they talk about the kids more often than not. Um, I think that speaks once again to the uniqueness of this book. Um, I, I've not read anything else from Dan Simmons that is quite like this book. Maybe I'm missing some stuff. I've skipped quite a bit of his stuff, like Flashback, I couldn't finish. Uh, there was uh, the one, uh, what was it, Black something, I can't remember what, what that one was. Um, and then Children of the Night, which gets confused with this one, um, is his vampire story. I have absolutely no want or need uh, to read uh, vampire stories from him because I didn't like Carrion Comfort. I feel that there was a huge missed opportunity 
uh, with with that book. Uh, you can read my review on Goodreads if, if you want to know. But this one is a favorite that I go back to. Um, I've read it, I think, three times at this point. I might even start it this year, um, but there are so many new horror books that I want to get to, This especially uh, uh, Stephen Graham Jones's My Heart is a Chainsaw. Uh, that'll be coming up on the channel very shortly because I just got it in the mail. But this one... Um, I, I'm not sure if I'll have time to reread it this year, but ever since I read it the first time, I read it two more times, um, and I've enjoyed it every single time. And that's hard to say about a 600-page book. Um, I do like I do like chunky novels. Um, my favorite book of all time is It by Stephen King. Uh, this one, I don't tend to. I don't, I don't tend to recommend this one to people who, and I I see it all the time. If you if you like it, you'll like this one. Um, I don't see it. Um, the, the only correlation that I see is the supernatural and it's a group of kids, but there are thousands upon thousands of books like that, especially in the horror genre. Um, coming of Age is one of the most popular genres um, to the point that some people are just sick and tired of it. You hear it a lot when uh, you know people talk about Stranger Things, uh, anything with nostalgia, um, anything that goes back you know to the to the eighties or any, any farther back. Uh, there are people who just won't read it because they're they're worried about, hey, you remember this? Hey, you remember that? And some authors do it well, like Stephen King, and some authors don't, like Ernest Klein. Um, it, it's, but Dan Simmons captured a special moment. Um, I, I feel it, this is a piece of magic, not on par with it, but it stand, like I said, it stands alone. It is so much fun to read. Um, I. Once again, I want to bring up the, the that character death is a punch in the gut. Um, I don't know that I liked the rest of the book as much as I liked up until that point, um, but I think that's why I gave it four point five stars. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't read my review, and that was the review after the first time that I read it. So I might actually contradict myself. I do this quite often, and people pop up and go, "Hey, you didn't. You said this back then." I was like, "Yeah, but that was years ago. My opinion is going to change." I'm not always going to update my reviews. It happens. Um, but yeah, so this one, I, I'd, I'd love to talk to you guys about it. I would love to see your opinion about whether or not you feel that it is it is good to compare the these two books. You know, Stephen King's It and Dan Simmons' uh, Summer of Night. Do you think it's a good thing to compare books in general? I'd like to have that discussion with you down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E. You've been you. This has been my one of my favorite horror novels. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.